Right, what do we have here? That's a strange looking walkie talkie, some of you are probably uh, thinking. Well, what we have here is a Galaxy Invader 1000. Now, I remember these lovely uh, things from back when I was a, a young person in the early 80s. Never had one, but in those um, days of uh, console uh, games and Space Invaders, these um, pocket games of different types, well not pocket games really, but these these portable games consoles were absolutely massive. And now sort of good versions of these in like boxed and, and stuff go for significant sums of money. Now I managed to get this one a little bit cheaper because the person selling it uh, said that it didn't work. They put batteries in it and found that it didn't work. And it also got a, the battery cover was missing as you can see. On the back of the unit now as you know if you've followed the channel i can probably uh, sort uh, both of those things out now just having a little look here i can see someone's had a go at repairing the the battery plate there in the past anyway that's a non-standard non-standard arrangement there that's for sure so um there might be something else wrong with this galaxy invader 1000 uh we can obviously um uh, make a new battery plate up for that either with the resin printer or 3D printer design and print one of those and I've seen a few that have come up with um, missing fire buttons as well so what I'll do when I've got this part is probably take the fire button out and um, make some measurements and then uh, resin print a few of these um, because I think in, in red these will come out pretty pretty decent so I'll, I'll make some uh, take some dimensions of this and see see how I can get the uh, replacements to look, the resin replacements, that might be interesting, might help a few people out who've got these with broken fire buttons. Okay then, well let's, um, let's get the current limited power supply into action, uh, fire this up and see if it is indeed dead. Okay, so when we, when we dip the positive connector on the back of the, uh, the back here, we do get a momentary display come up on the display it pops up momentarily and then it dips out so I'm gonna I'm gonna say there's probably a capacitor issue somewhere but there's a lot of corrosion on that plate at the back and um, that we'll need either replacing probably replacing looking at it so that's good that the display is actually working though because this would probably be a non-starter if the display was actually not working at all so let's take the screws out of it and um, and have a closer look. Okay, now straight away um, something's fairly noticeable on the display, and that is this dark area in the <coughs> bottom right-hand corner. You have to excuse me, I've uh, still got COVID at the moment, so having fun with that. Um, it does appear to be a dark a dark area at the bottom of the display. Now that that might be normal um, it doesn't look normal um, but this display does appear to power on and then go off again so obviously it's a sealed display that so if that like I say if that is faulty then this really is isn't repairable um, but it will be a useful uh, a useful um, bit of kit to take some measurements off and like I say, knock up some spares for folks. Let's say, because, I mean, box ones in really good condition do fetch quite good money. And, um, you know, these are, the, you know, these are as vintage as the CB radios, really. And for me, these, you know, these things came out at that same time as well. So, you know, it all ties together nicely. So, um, I'm hoping we can do something with this. We possibly won't be able to, but we'll have a look further okay so what we'll do um, we'll bathe these uh, switches with a little bit of switch cleaner first because you know why not it's not gonna hurt is it so we'll give these a wiggle and I'm sure these probably aren't anything to do with the lack of display and we'll get a little bit of, once that's dry, we'll get a little bit of WD-40 in there, give them a bit of an oil. So, yeah, I think what we're going to need to do now then is 
remove all of the board screws and flip it over. I will just test it first um, before I do that. I'll give it a quick test first um, to see if it does power on again. Okay, now um, dimming down the bench lamp a bit, we can see when we get this on. We are getting a good, you know, all of the lines appear to be firing up on the display. And it's almost like there's a bad joint. I move the, give it a spike and it breaks down. Or well, we could be looking at a capacitor. There's, it, the, the supply is pulling 200 milliamps when it actually maintains current. Right, now I haven't got a, um, a digital microscope at the minute to be able to show you this, but I've got this as close as I can. And I think I've found the problem. I've not rectified it yet. But can you see that this track here is ruckled, to use uh, a word my mum would use. <laughs> it's, it's lifted there where it's got, it's got loose. Now it might be attached to the rocker switch mechanism here, which, uh, which I'm not sure. But what, what I'm definitely sure of is the fact that it's actually lost the ground connection um, between these pins. So if we test here, we've got continuity, but as we go round, we've lost it, okay? So we've got it there, but we've lost it there. So that might be all that's stopping this from working. Um, there's quite a lot of gunk on the back of this board, so I'm just gonna clean this area up with a bit of isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush. And then um, I'll make a, a repair there with a piece of wire and, um, and we'll see if that is the only reason why this isn't working. I hope so. Right, I'm sure you can clearly see now uh, the break on the board. Um, you can see just there a crack. As I've cleaned that up now that's clearly exposed. And this is indeed the mechanical fixing points for the toggle joystick uh, that you control the craft left and right in the game which is obviously just over time put stress on this joint and caused it to fail here and i don't think it helps by the fact virtue of the fact that the the other leg of this the supporting mechanical leg of this has come loose as well or as wasn't originally soldered maybe even so um, i'm hoping that with resoldering that and resoldering all four of these legs that'll be enough for uh, and repairing this We'll have enough uh, strength there for it to uh, maintain a secure connection. But it really does help getting the isopropyl alcohol uh, into gear and getting all of the resin off the boards just so you can see what's going on. Okay, so we've got a, a brass linking bar there, a thin pin, which is linking between there the main support of the switch and the other track. And we've now, if we get our meter on and we select and we select the noisy mode and we go off of down here now we've got continuity there and we've got continuity there and we've got continuity there so we're good so this is the acid test then does does that mean it's going to work for me you know, clearly the person that went to all the effort of making this nice little aluminium plate and um you know dropped in the the, the correct size stud for the uh, positive tip terminal there. Obviously didn't go to as much care to make sure that the negative one <laughs> fitted either. So, I mean, I don't understand that because you can get these spring plates, you can get them anyway. I mean, I could probably find something, but that isn't gonna work as you can clearly see that's, you know, you'd have to scalp the battery for that to work. So yeah, that's gonna have to be removed and um, I'm going to have to find a suitable replacement. Let's have a deep dive in the drawer of never-ending parts to see if I've got any springs. Well, I'm damn sure I have, you know. I think I've got a little spring kit. I've got something for every occasion normally. It's always right at the back of the drawer as well, isn't it? I didn't check that when I come to fit the other batteries in the case they didn't go in because this plate the guy 
who originally did this, he's no mechanical engineer, he made it way too thick. I mean, I say made it, it's one of these little magnetic latch plates. I don't know if you've seen those where you have a magnet one side and then you fix that to something. So he's used what he's just had lying around. And what I've used, um, I never throw anything away, me. I've used an old um, piece of heat shield from a radio and um, just cut that out and that'll be perfect and I've just soldered the spring to the one side so this will slide in now properly now and it'll also mean that the batteries uh, won't be too tight to remove there we go that looks a bit better doesn't it looks a bit more like what it should look like and um, we shall populate it with these cells now check these batteries they're not all absolutely perfect but they're good enough for jazz as I often say and we'll pop these in here We'll just make sure it's off before we do this. It is off, yeah. We'll just pop these in here. Clean that one up. These go in and out much nicer now. There we go. That's better. Just packed it out a little bit now. Got a bit more tension on these uh, connections, which is nice. We'll get the battery case made up. So now, let's give it the uh, acid test, guys. There we go. Yay! Okay, I think that calls for some a bit of a, a clear up and then we'll snow foam the case to get it all uh, nice and clean and then uh, yeah I think we can uh, we can then have a look at designing a battery case which I think I'll probably do on another video. So let's get this cleaned up. Oh, got the button. Right, I never said I was any good at it, did I? Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this bit of a different episode today. And uh, I'm probably going to do a few more of these, get hold of a few broken versions of these 80s classic toys and uh, see if we can bring them back. Some of, I hope some of you might find that a bit interesting alongside the CBs. So if you have been, thank you ever so, so much for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.